it's Tuesday, August 21st, and of course, this is the video leg that takes 30,000 to a million. After I take you to the, through the account, I want to talk about the difference between speculating and investing and gambling and um, what I think about that. <laughs> so it might be a fun one, maybe it won't, we'll see. But the account looks like this. I've had a pretty good week. I'm over, sitting over 63,000 now. Again, um, this is the week chart because the day just clicked over and there is no chart. <laughs> I'm just showing you the week. Now, as far as the account goes, Apple had a modest gain. I was actually, I think, sitting over 64,000 at one point in the day. But um, corrected back down. So Apple's gained me about $51. Options were about flat on Apple. And then I have... Let's see, $13 on Main Street Capital over here. The Russian market plus $14. I'm really happy about the Russian market hovering around this level because I had sold a put option, which means I'm going to be collecting 100 shares of the Russian ETF at $22 if it stays below $22. And hovering, if it's hovering like this a little bit below $22, I'm really happy uh, because I'm going to be getting at a good price. I've been waiting for the Russian market to correct for quite some time. This is what the chart looks like right now. Look, we have, um, it was a 24 and it was too expensive for me to get back in. I had sold, I think, a uh, call at 23, so I collected some profit there. Let me see, make sure. At, it's not here, see more history. Um, sell a put. Yeah, 23, I had a call assignment. So selling at 23. And now it's below 22 again, so I'm trying to pick up some more shares. So I've, I sold the call quite a bit ago, and I'm sorry, I put quite a bit ago, ready to collect some 100 more shares. I only have 50 right now. And um, I mentioned before why I want to collect Russian ETF is because of its massive dividend. And I just, like I said, I took a trip to Russia and I really liked how the economy is going over there. So I'm pretty optimistic on the country as far as its economy goes. And um, plus that dividend, man come January it's gonna be fat <laughs> so I want to I want to taste of that so I'm selling some um, call I'm sorry put options here on that okay moving on what else is interesting I got uranium and so energy fuels popped up a little bit 35 bucks and whenever that pops the options as well go up a little bit um, today's return though is actually negative but uh, it's an anomaly usually when the price goes up so will my options because I have more cash collateral than than share collateral which means I have more puts sold than calls I'm still trying to make money off of this mainly because the the premium is just so big on energy fuels if you bounce around the two dollar and fifty level selling call options and put options around that level I mean it's returning you you know three four five percent per month sometimes which is a really good payout and um, if energy fuel, fuel manages not to if energy fuel manages not all right cool so if it manages not to uh, drop too far below 250 I think there's a lot of money to be made from the sideways market all right moving on from energy fuels chemical my previous favorite sideways market beast is now letting me down a little bit but today there's been a bit of a recovery up into almost the nine dollar range great week up almost four percent which means that uh, over here you can see the liabilities have decreased a hundred dollars because I have look how much cash forty six hundred dollars <laughs> waiting to get into chemical so as if chemical has just a little bit of a plus day look sixty dollars stock gain because I have 500 shares and then 107 options gain which is more so chemical doing work that's great I have been predicting if you go back a few videos for chemical to pop back up I didn't know exactly when but I knew it's, it couldn't hold that low level for a while it might be in a downward trend now though so um, I may have to keep a close eye on it this champion right here C-SPAN um, if you remember I, <laughs> a video or two ago, I mentioned how it finished at exactly $10, which was my cost 
right? And during the at the end of the week, and I had sold two calls for it. So if it finished at ten, it was supposed to sell. But this is good information because they had this had never happened to me before. So if you guys are wondering, if it finishes exactly at the price, then um, you get to keep the shares. The call option does not execute, so you don't have to sell your shares if 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 the price of the share finishes exactly at your strike price. I think it's a pretty good cool um, tidbit there, which probably means that the reverse is true as well. Um, if you finish it exactly the right, the, the price, it, the, the trade doesn't execute. No deal. It has to be $10 and one penny or thereabouts. So this beast over here, it even popped over $10 now. So now I have a total of $60 more gain. And if I sold right here, I'd be at a profit. What I'm thinking of doing though, of course, you may have already guessed it, sell a call, <laughs> two more calls for $10. And I'll be selling them at a bit of a premium. I missed my window to sell. Um, I, was, I had a quite of a busy day, so I didn't sell here, but I will sell a call, especially now I don't want to miss the chance while it's over $10. If tomorrow pops up higher, my premiums are only going to get more expensive, which means more money for me. And uh, I like that. So I think that's about it with the account here. Now, what do I think is the difference between, because I had a comment and it kind of um, made an impression on me, like the difference between speculation and investment and gambling. So I refer, I use those terms all the time. And to me, the, the real difference here is that is the risk tolerance, right? The risk profile of each one of the activities that you're doing. Like for example, if, if a company is, has a proven model, has been profitable before, and you know that what they're doing works and um, there's plenty of evidence to suggest that, then it's an investment, right? So for example, if, if I buy a lemonade stand, I'm investing in a lemonade stand, right? Because I know I'll be able to generate some kind of a business out of it, okay? Um, if I'm buying up some exploration mining company, that's more of a speculation, right? I mean, there's there, some people use the term investment in there because they're kind of investing in the people because the people have proven evidence that they've they've done something really good before so you're kind of investing in the management team or the exploration team and you know that they yield results so you could say that that's kind of an investment but you can see how the lines are starting to blur here so it's really just a matter of terminology and semantics but semantics sometimes are important and you know that's that it's language that's how we communicate and it's important to kind of differentiate between the words so um but the reason I'm, I'm, I'm telling you all this because someone mentioned that what I'm doing is 100% speculation and, and every investment is a speculation and I disagree with that. So I wanted to kind of clear the air and what I use, what I, what kind of terms I use to describe the activities that I'm personally doing as well as other people. Now, sometimes you can even straight up gamble, right? Uh, even on the stock market, if you are in a casino everybody agrees that that's gambling sometimes when you gamble the odds are even against you but you decide to do it anyways yeah, for the thrill of it or whatever or the odds are undefined that's also gambling to me right you just put some money in there and you have no idea what the what the chances of you winning are at least in blackjack you know that oh maybe you know i have a 48 to 51 percent chance of winning depending on the rules right so you know that at least there's some odds, or if you go to play slot machines, you know that you have 40% chance to win or thereabouts, right? So you got you got some kind of idea of what you're getting into with gambling at least. So, but um, that's, that's what that means. Gambling is undefined risk or defined losing risk, all right? So uh, casinos, they don't gamble, right? Because they have a defined positive risk. Uh, not risk, I mean expectation, you know, of what's going to go on. So you can invest in a casino because you know that model works with enough players, with enough card players, with enough slot machines and everything else, you are going to make that money, right? Even if you do huge payouts every once in a while, it's all factored into the probabilities and the probabilities are programmed into the machines and into the games. And so 
um, you know, all the games are profitable, otherwise they wouldn't be there, they wouldn't take up slot space or, you know, table space, etc. So you can invest in a casino, but you gamble at a casino, all right? Now, gambling in the stock market, I think that that would be uh, buying call options and put options and stuff like that short term. Long term, not so much, and I'll tell you why, right? Short term, I think, is gambling because it's virtually impossible to predict um, any kind of event that might happen around the world. I mean, if you have some kind of inside information, then yes, but no matter how much of a chartist you are, and I know that there's a lot of value in, in chartists and technical analysis and all that, so I appreciate it, and people definitely make money off of that. However, it's really almost impossible to predict whether there's going to be a some kind of a big major event that slushes the price of a specific uh, item down or up on any given day, right? So buying short-term call and long, I'm sorry, uh, calls and puts is to me is gambling. Like maybe sometimes it can be considered like an insurance. Right, you buy insurance for um, your portfolio for a certain period of time if you smell something coming, but and and for a long term, I can I, I can see that as being prudent or as part of some kind of option strategy that's well researched and proven to make you money. Then okay, but if you do if you're just buying like call options and put options randomly, depending on recent price movements of of a certain stock or equity or whatever what have you, that's gambling you know, to me, it's undefined risk and, um, or negative risk because time's running, you know, against you if nothing happens. So definitely gambling. So we have investment where it's a proven method of making money, um, and clear and defined, you know, risk. And then we have speculation, which is usually high risk, uh, not enough evidence to support the method of making money and um, it's usually not a proven method right it's just not it has not played out like the risk tolerance is a lot different there right like I mentioned the mining companies usually exploration especially are um, speculation and I don't think anything is a speculation you know you can't just lump all these um, words together because they start losing their meaning. I mean, for example, if I go outside, right, I'm speculating that I'll be able to breathe the air. <laughs> okay, um, everything becomes a speculation. If if I, you know, take a step outside, I'm speculating that there's not going to be a sinkhole in front of my foot every time I take a step. I mean, at some point, it, it's it's all about risk tolerance, right? I mean, yes, I agree that we swim in a sea of risk out there, but there, you know, the risks are very very minimal in some activities and quite exacerbated in others, and that's what makes the difference between um, an investment and prudent actions and speculation and gambling. All right, so I just wanted to clear up these these terms, and um, I don't know if you find any value in that. I'm just kind of, you know, venting on what's on what's been on my mind when it comes to um, investing and just trying to figure things out as well. So, um, but at least I got to share my account with you all, get my login, and um, you know, hopefully you guys are making more money than I am. And if you are, like, share what you're doing, and I'll, I'm always interested in to hear what other investors and traders are doing and what works for them and even if they're if you if you have big losses or big gains like share them I want to hear um, that's kind of why I started this channel anyways because I wanted to share what I'm doing because I was interested in what other people are doing all the time and I'm always searching up uh, investors and want to look at their accounts and what works for them and why they're making the choices they are so yeah let me know. All right, I think that's it for now. I'll try to make another video, probably not tomorrow, but on Thursday night, I think. And um, I think that's it for now. Hopefully, I have a new all-time high record. It's this is not an all-time high record because I had a thousand or two dollars while the my account was low. But now, you know, I'm always this account is at an all-time high, but not judging by the amount of money I've put in there. 
um, here let me show you real quick the all-time chart so it's it's near all-time high again but it's not quite okay 63 so I would need to reach 64 785 so about one grand off and I think that I can do it pretty soon hopefully with a couple good days I'll have a new all-time record high haven't had one in a while so I want to share that if, if that happens all right and I think that's about it I'll make another video in a couple days all right peace out